We're turning from that to serve someone who is all of these things. And we worship him in, 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 in the beauty of that holiness. You have to know who you're worshiping. is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words my name is Andrew Hemstrott and I welcome you and thank you for joining us all over the world you know there's preaching going on right now all over the world but he said to me no one's gonna preach what you're gonna preach tonight and then he thanked me for it in advance isn't that nice I'm going to be talking about worshiping the Holy Ghost say worshiping the Holy Ghost now by worshiping the Holy Ghost you have to come to a place of knowing him as God right yeah. and as the only part of the Godhead in the earth today and if you do that if you know him as God in the earth you should worship him yeah. doesn't that make sense yes. right and so when I say I worship the Holy Ghost or you say I worship you Holy Ghost say I worship you Holy Ghost, I worship you, Holy Ghost. that's not really done most places you understand but I'm going to be talking about worshiping the Holy Ghost as God and advanced. Say advanced. Advanced. Advanced worshiping of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. There's there's basic level. Like you start at the basic level. You, you have to understand He's God. Go. I worship you, Holy Ghost. But then you can advance in that. You can develop in it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be good to know? Because some of us are going on. Isaiah 57 verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is Holy. Holy. So what's his name? Holy. You got any idea what his last name is? Ghost. Ghost or spirit. You know, some people like to get online and, you know, badger me about that. Oh, I like to say spirit, not ghost. But you could say that too. It's all right. But here it says his first name is Holy, right? Whose name is Holy now we're going to be talking a lot about what holiness actually means mm -hmm. especially from God's perspective mm -hmm. holiness is purity uncorrupted you understand anyway I wanted to get across that his name is holy because we need to know who we are worshiping and the Holy Ghost said this to me and this is part of what I'm told to do this is part of my calling this is part of what I'm supposed to be doing here mm -hmm. one of the reason why you're watching online now bring them into the worship of me say bring them, bring them into, into the worship, the worship of, me. of me it's part of my call it's part of my command are you here yes. I believe in the Holy Ghost I love the Holy Ghost he is God in the earth today and advanced worship comes from knowing say knowing knowing, knowing better or more who he is mm -hmm. see because you can worship him better say I can worship him better I can worship him more if I know who he is better and more right yeah. and what he does mm -hmm. we know who we worship and the more you know who you worship the better you can get at it first Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9 and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God they turn from idols to serve the living and true God well the word serve there is translated worship the same Greek word is translated worship in the King James but it's also translated worship in other translations so he says you're turning to God from idols to worship the living and true God now you can think about idols you understand back in the day it's not as prevalent today maybe it is in some other countries mm -hmm. but they have idols and they worship them they serve them they pray to them mm -hmm. and each idol has a specific thing that they're worshiping it for have you heard of this mm -hmm. well I don't know what you're talking no how about fertility have you heard of that mm -hmm. there's a special idol that you would go and offer gifts to pray to mm -hmm. and ask to make you fertile <laughs> are you here I know it sounds funny to our ears I'm just trying to bring you up to speed here at what we're turning from so we can turn to yeah. he made us he's he's talking specifically about turning from that to something else you understand so we're turning from asking this 
inanimate object that can't speak to give me fertility turning to the true and living God who could actually make you fertile are you here yes. and we've seen him do it in the Bible mm -hmm. how about healing will people go and ask an idol for healing mm -hmm. oh heal me great rock <laughs> I don't know how they do it but they would right there's specific idols and things that they would ask to heal them am I wrong here yeah. no he's turned from that to serve or worship see they were worshiping the idol now we're gonna worship the true and living God who will heal you how about youth renewal does he renew your youth yes we've turned to him and he renews my youth I turn to him how about prosperity do people pray to rocks for prosperity <laughs> sounds funny all oh, people that carry around their little rabbit's foot <laughs> you know it's all it's all function of the same thing they're trying to get something out of that it's not in there you turn from that to serve or worship the true and living God and who do we know that to be holy the Holy Ghost so let me read off a couple of how about prosperity yes how about protection yes. they would go to the temple if they're gonna go on a long trip they go to the temple and they pray to some stone and give it some offerings mm -hmm. to protect them on their journey mm -hmm. they're worshiping that idol mm -hmm. here it says they turned from that to say to, to. meaning they turned from worshiping that to worshiping say worshiping worshiping, worshiping the true and living God are you here yes. so we're no longer asking the stone for prosperity or protection or deliverance or whatever it happens to be mm -hmm. or rain or my crops to be blessed whatever it happens to be I'm now turning to the true and living God and worshiping him mm -hmm. for what the same thing are you here yes. all right I'm reminded of Job remember you know the, the devil accused Job of serving God he says you don't serve him for nothing you serve him because he blesses you with all this stuff mm -hmm. Job was worshiping God and God was blessing him with all the stuff mm -hmm. are you here yes. that's the way it works if you worship God he blesses you you got a problem with that I hope not so we're turning from the idols to turning from worshiping the idols to worshiping the living God yes. mm -hmm. 2nd Corinthians 6 16 and what agreement hath the temple of God with what idols mm -hmm. what agreement has the temple of God with idols for you are the temple of the living God so you have no agreement with the idols anymore we've turned from that and now we are the temple of the living God well let's just quickly see who we're talking about who's the God that's gonna be in them or in you and walk in you and be your God mm -hmm. you know the answer to this mm -hmm. but I have to repeat it over and over and over and over again until people get it first Corinthians 3 16 know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you mm -hmm. who is the Spirit of God no. the Holy Ghost we've turned from idols to serve the Spirit of God mm -hmm. are you here yes. who do we worship the Holy Ghost are you seeing this yes. go to first Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19 what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost yes. we said the living gods dwelling in you right and you are now the temple of the living God and he says what no you're not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. are you getting this yes. we're turning from idols to serve the God that's in us first Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 now concerning spiritual gifts or things pertaining to the spirit brethren I would not have you ignorant you know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as you were led again he's bringing it up the idols and why did people worship idols to get the thing that the idol would supposedly give to them and we turn from that to serve the living God I'd have you not ignorant of these spiritual things say the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. and he goes on here to talk about 
the way the Holy Ghost operates you look down at verse 11 but all these worketh that one and self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will the Bible calls him a he and it says he's the one that works all of these things all of these gifts all these things that you just talked about are worked by the one where do the gifts of the Spirit operate in the earth where you are who's operating them who's the one one the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. he's the one and only all these worketh that one and self same spirit Holy Ghost dividing to every man severally as he wills or as he wants to mm -hmm. verse 6 and there are diversities of operations but the same God which works all in all so who's God in the earth today the Holy Ghost the only one mm -hmm. are you here yes. but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all for to one is given by the Spirit a word or the word of wisdom mm -hmm. he gives a word mm -hmm. of his wisdom he is all wisdom you understand that mm -hmm. and so he just gives a word say a word. a word he doesn't give wisdom he gives a word of his wisdom because he is with say he is wisdom he is wisdom right he gives a word of his knowledge why because he has all knowledge are you getting this mm -hmm. he gives a gift of healing why would he give a gift of healing he would have to have it first to give it to you you understand so what does he have healing. he has all healing it's who he is that's where I'm trying to bring you up to the place of understanding that he is God and who we worship mm -hmm. because the more you know about him the deeper and better and more advanced your worship can be mm -hmm. the same God verse 6 that works all in all and all these worketh that one mm -hmm. so let's go back and see who Jesus said to worship Luke 4 verse 8 for it is written thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only they only. only and him only shalt thou serve again the word serve and again worship kind of used together who did Jesus said say we should worship thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve Luke chapter 4 verse 1 Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by who the Spirit, the Spirit into the wilderness who was Jesus led by the Spirit who was Jesus following the Spirit, the Spirit. he said he him only shall you serve mm -hmm. at that point we could see he, he might be starting to serve the Spirit we'll see exactly who the Spirit is that Jesus was was following mm -hmm. and being led by Luke chapter 3 verse 21 now when all the people were baptized it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying the heaven was opened and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him who descended upon Jesus and came upon Jesus from that day forward the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. And then over in, in Luke chapter 4 verse 1 it says and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness are you following this yes. go down to verse 14 and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit so we had Jesus following the Spirit being led by the Spirit and now he's returning under the power of the Spirit He's following the Spirit he's being led by the Spirit he's obeying the Spirit he's submitting to the Spirit Luke chapter 4 verse 18 then he opens his mouth and he says the Spirit of the Lord mm -hmm. is upon me who did Jesus call Lord Jesus called the Spirit Lord he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach who did Jesus call Lord the Holy Ghost so we have him following 
the spirit being led by the spirit obeying the spirit submitting to the spirit serving the purpose of the Holy Ghost and then calling the Holy Ghost Lord and right sandwiched in between that he says you shall serve the Lord your God and him only shall you serve who was Jesus serving the Holy Ghost who did Jesus say you're supposed to worship the Holy Ghost thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve I think people have a problem with that but you shouldn't who said it Jesus said it if Jesus said it I'm okay with it Luke chapter 4 verse 8 mm -hmm. and you'd be taking these scriptures out of context to say that Jesus was talking about anybody else because he was serving the Holy Ghost he was following the Holy Ghost and he called the Holy Ghost Lord and then in there he says you shall serve the Lord your God we know he's God mm -hmm. and him only shall you serve Luke 4 6 and the devil said unto him all this power will I give thee in the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it if thou therefore wilt worship me all will be thine again here we have this time is the devil but he's saying if you'll worship me then all of this stuff that I supposedly have will be yours you see we're talking about worship we're talking about the transfer of something to someone else through worship mm -hmm. they used to worship the idol to try to get the thing that they thought the idol had are you here mm -hmm. we're talking about the law of worship if you're a person and you're in the earth you will be worshiping something we're designed to do it that way you can understand that it's a law it's a principle that God built into the earth that's why he doesn't want you worshiping other things he wants you worshiping him if I worship him what do I get I get his stuff if I worship him and he is healing and health and youth renewal what do I get healing health and youth renewal mm -hmm. Exodus 34 verse 14 thou shalt worship no other God now do you suppose this would be the same God that Jesus was talking about mm -hmm. he said thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only now all of these things we're looking into because we're we want to advance in our worship of the Living God the Holy Ghost because if you can advance farther you can have better things say better things, better things. that he already has second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 the eyes of the Lord run to and fro where throughout the whole earth who do we know is God in the earth the Holy, Ghost. Holy Ghost the eyes of the Lord who happens to be in the earth the Holy Ghost run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself which means to reveal himself to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect say perfect. perfect perfect towards him that means single towards him he's a jealous God he doesn't want you worshiping some other God or some rock are you here he wants you single towards him Jesus said worship the Lord your God and him singularly only must there be some reason behind it mm -hmm. yes because when you truly and only worship God because remember he's a holy God and he's a jealous God when you see, when you truly worship him he begins to reveal himself to you who does it say he's gonna reveal himself to the one whose heart is perfect towards him the one whose heart is single towards him him who the Holy Ghost you getting anything out of this worshiping the Holy Ghost or using the words I like to say it this way using the words I worship you Holy Ghost takes you behind the veil what do you mean behind the veil if you're behind the veil you had something revealed to you mm -hmm. that hasn't been revealed to somebody else you understand mm -hmm. you went behind the veil mm -hmm. you saw what was back there part of the price is having your heart single towards God part of the price is worshiping the true and living God who is the Holy Ghost and then he opens that veil and you can go in Psalms 96 verse 9 oh worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness so there must be beauty in holiness we're gonna worship him 
in the beauty of holiness where is he he's in holiness so you go oh what kind of holiness does he live in well we talked about it a little bit earlier he has all wisdom obviously he lives in all wisdom mm -hmm. we're gonna worship him that's beautiful isn't all wisdom beautiful mm -hmm. yes we're gonna worship him in that see what's happening here we're starting to know him more and there we can worship him in an advanced state what holiness is this that he speaks of first John chapter 1 verse 5 this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all so what kind of beauty is this holiness that we're talking about it's the kind of light that has no darkness at all mm -hmm. meaning that's purity of light and one other word you can call that is holiness of light are you getting this mm -hmm. now I think of you know there's a th this thing called absolute zero it's where they've extracted all the heat out of it and they've calculated it to be 273.15 degrees Celsius below zero it's really cold but they couldn't that's as, that's as cold as things can get do you understand mm -hmm. would there be any heat in there no. not a bit meaning it's gone it's all been extracted out mm -hmm. when God is light and no darkness at all what is that absolute light this is the light that the Holy Ghost comes from this is the light that he lives in this is the beauty of holiness how about healing what kind of healing does the Holy Ghost live in absolute healing say that absolute healing how about youth renewal absolute youth renewal which means he could he could feasibly live forever what kind of wealth does the Holy Ghost live in and come absolute from wealth. absolute wealth do you are you starting to see who you're worshiping and you wanted to worship that rock did that rock have absolute wealth mm -hmm. that rock had almost nothing right? right even if it was made out of diamonds it wouldn't be absolute wealth mm -hmm. are you here yeah. we're turning from that to serve someone who is all of these things and we worship him in in say in in, in the beauty of that holiness you have to know who you're worshiping so if you come to know him as God would you not worship him yes. if this what I'm talking about has been revealed to you that the Holy Ghost is this divine person who lives in this beauty of holiness mm -hmm. and you know that he's God and he's a person and he's in the earth would you not worship him of course you would mm -hmm. unless you were religiously instructed to not which would be very sad if you come to know him as God presented with his excellence mm -hmm. his purity his holiness the opposite is also true that if you worship him you would come to know him as God and the more we worship him the more we'll know him as God mm -hmm. this is helping some people if you worship him you would know him as God as a divine holy person and the more you worship him the more you'll know him as God well there's also other things that happen too what happens those things that he is mm -hmm. begin to come on you second mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord now do you remember that first verse of scripture we read we're turning to God from idols who are we turning to the true and living God who was the true and living God the Holy, Ghost. the Holy Ghost nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the what the veil shall be taken away if I were to you know unveil a new car or something like that I would say and now here's the new car and as I do that I take off the cloak and you'd see the new car when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away now the Lord is that spirit what spirit the Holy, the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit are you getting this yes. now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit is Lord or where the spirit of the Lord is there is 
liberty or freedom mm -hmm. insert there any of the liberties or freedoms that the Holy Ghost actually has mm -hmm. because the veil's been taken away and you're worshiping him verse 18 but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord Amen. how do, how are we beholding this because we've had the veil taken away we're looking at who he is say who he is. who he is who he is what he has what he does remember in the beauty of holiness mm -hmm. are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by who spirit. the Spirit of the Lord we're changed into his image by beholding him and worshiping him and knowing who he is are you here yes. now the lord is that spirit jesus said thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shalt thou serve first chronicles 29 verse 11 thine o lord is the greatness say the greatness, the greatness. Are you see what's see what's happening here yes somebody's had some revelation here the greatness and the majesty i mean and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty and all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine and thine is the kingdom O Lord and thou art exalted as head above all verse 12 both riches and honor come from thee are you here mm -hmm. who are you worshiping this God remember we're changed into the same image what image his image what image is he he's holiness he's the greatness he's the power he's the victory riches and honor belong to him as I worship him I'm not worshiping wealth I'm worshiping him and that comes from him mm -hmm. riches and honor are of thee are you seeing this yes. oh you worship the Holy Ghost you have you know when people go oh you worship the Holy they have no idea who I'm worshiping but I know who I worship are you here and the more I worship him the more I know him because I'm worshiping in the beauty of holiness his holiness what kind of holiness absolute holiness and what am I changed into his image which is what absolute holiness no darkness at all no lack in him is wealth there is no lack at all and I'm changed into his image from glory to glory from one level of glory to the next level of glory as it's revealed to me in the beauty of holiness as I worship him are you getting this yes. he says bring them into the worship of me doesn't that sound right yes. bring them into the worship of me and we've been doing that we've just done that you know more about the Holy Ghost now you have a clear image of who he is when you worship him he's not some god in rags i can tell you that mm -hmm. right he's not some god that's having a problem with youth renewal or sickness or disease you're worshiping him back in the beginning why were those people worshiping those idols because they wanted the thing they thought that idol would give them so sad mm -hmm. when you compare that to the true and living god in the beauty of holiness has all of those things and more and we're changed according to second corinthians 318 were changed into the same image that's the law of worship it comes on you he comes on you mm -hmm. you are his temple and as I worship him I am healed as I worship him I am prospered as I worship him my youth is renewed as I worship him I'm changed from one glory to the next glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord mm -hmm.